I've been given instructions. <laughs> you need to get pregnant within the next six months. Otherwise, you will miss your destiny. This woman has the guts to even dictate your bedroom, you and your husband. Six months, if you don't get married, mother, if you don't get pregnant, if you don't get pregnant, sorry, you may lose your destiny. Oh God. And you will make the man of God stagger oh, wow. towards his destiny. Mm -hmm. So a child became paramount, paramount. I had to get pregnant. You're prophesying the breakup of people because they're not doing what you want. If she sees your wife and you're the guy, your wife is a problem to her goals, she will begin prophesying a split. I saw around seven couples going through divorce and prophetess hands were involved. Oh God. Yes. And I tried opening the eyes of my ex and they never opened. I started saying no to so many things. And at this point, even in church, I'm an enemy to people because you know, people have been told, hey, rebellion. These people are told you're rebellious and people are recruited to hit back at you because you're trying to raise a voice of reason into what is going on. And most people who have left churches are lonely because crowds are against them. And if you listen to the story, they have a point. There's something they've seen that people are blinded about. A warm welcome back to LNS. My name is Lynn Gugi. Now, if you tuned in yesterday, no, first and foremost, please do not watch this episode if you have not watched yesterday's episode. Uh, because if you tuned in yesterday, then you know we were talking to our lovely guest, a mother who has gone through a lot in the hands of her man of God, her pastor, her husband, and the prophetess who decided to take advantage of everyone financially and this conversation is here because you asked for it i want us to start having hard conversation especially religion in africa yeah. is something else and if we don't start having this conversation we are going to lose a lot of people to people who have made this their business making sure they extort money from people simply by using the name of god and that's why this conversation is happening so let me not go any further mother we are to get to this part of mm. whether you found yourself. Mm. But before that, yeah. instructions have come. Yes. Partner A, mm. do this. Mm. Partner A, hey, there are all those things, mm. do this. Yeah. It's time to move yes. and make a room for the prophet. Yes. Okay. We now have moved mm. and I forgot to mention, yeah. there is a car that partner A had been instructed to give into my ex's life. Wow. By the time I was getting married, he had a Noah yes. that had come from partner A. Wow. So three months into the marriage, uh, we were instructed to sell this car and give it as a fast fruit. So again, half a million shillings, car sold, fast fruit. Instructions coming from prophetess. So yes. Let me, let me ask a very stupid question because yeah. this, convert, this topic is getting to me now. Yeah. These instructions that keep you know, been given, mm. I've instructed you to give, I know I've instructed you to tell. Mm -hmm. These instructions, mm -hmm. they are to lead you where? To a great destiny. And those, most of those destinies had timelines. Like in the next six months, God is going to, to give you something so tangible. And you know, Lena, I'm a smart woman. Some of those things I, I checked. I waited. Zero. Zero. And the cycle kept going on and on. In fact, the more we gave, the more desperate we became. Oh no, but which word is this though? Exactly. Which gospel is this? Exactly. That allows you to keep giving and exactly. draining yourself and yes. leaving nothing behind for yourself. But the moment I landed in her house, yeah. I knew where all this money is going. going. Yeah, I knew. So we've now moved. Yes. She has instructed us to move. Yeah. We've moved yeah. to a two-bedroom house. 
you're jobless, you don't have an income, you're depending on partners mm. all over the place. Mm. And most of my husband's work was always on phone, speaking to partners, praying for them, which is okay. Pray for people. Yeah, that's his job. That's his job. But now when it comes to finances, you hear them gi being given targets, you know, send 5,000 shillings by tomorrow, 2 p.m., you know. And so when we moved into this house, so partner A is giving 50,000 and us, we're giving 25,000 to profit taste. And how much is the rent? 25,000. So basically, we are living out of partner A's money, just paying the rent. And then these are the, let me call them small partners. Yes. They are the ones who take care of the food in the house. The clothes. You know, the clothes. And I was so confused. I didn't know, what am I bringing a child into? If I was to get a baby, I kept delaying, you know? I kept delaying. I didn't want to bring a child into this mess. And so it got to a point. So prophetess comes to our house. Now we are the HQ. She comes to our house. And anytime she comes to the house, every other Kenyan that knows her and knows that the woman of God is in Kenya, they'll flock. So in the morning, I'm up in the kitchen cooking for people with money we've asked from people. At times, my husband wakes up and says, we don't have fuel for today. Can you talk to your friends? We need to carry the woman of God around. And at this point, there is a voxy that we have from partner A. Instructions. She had given her voxy to us. So this is the car we are using to fuel and transport the woman of God wherever she's going. Mara, she's going to meet this couple wherever. There is this couple that's fighting. She needs to go and pray for them. There is a woman. He, she has a word for a woman. You know all that. Oh. Ministry. Oh. So it's mother and her husband who are sponsors. So fast. Yes. And she's so sleeping work. in your house. Yes. She's sleeping in my house. Guests are flocking in from morning, 7 a.m. There is a knock. People begin coming in. And the last one will leave at 10 p.m. Then do the dishes and everything. I have to do everything. And I was exhausted, Lynn. I was exhausted. After two of such trips, she would come for a month sometimes, sometimes two weeks. And when she goes again, we go back to that same old life. So what happened? Because God, God, God does not get mocked. Partner A gets to a point where she gets a fiancé. And this fiancé is a man of God. Ame mfungua macho. Ame mfungua macho. Ah, saka ende. And she's like, I am leaving. My time is up. I am leaving. And I was like, today she happy. Imagine that was my first fear. Like, the 25,000 she has been giving. What are we going to do? Where are we going to get such money? And so... Partner A and her Voxy, she called back her Voxy. This one came even for her Voxy. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Is she still around? Who, uh, partner A? Yes, she's no, around. No, Partner A. She's around. Ah, me, I'm saying hi to you. <laughs> she's doing well. Are you guys in way. good terms now? Yes. You are? Yes, yes. Ah, me, I'm saying hi to So, it's, Partner A lives oh, with her Voxy. There was a time she called me and we laughed. She made my day. She told uh. me. Do you remember how I was told, like, um, there's a big man of God in Nigeria. Yeah. So there is somehow, she used to be told to give seeds so that she will go see this man of God in Nigeria and he will speak a word in her life. And her life will never be the same again. So, but Nae would be told, give 50,000 shillings. Umebakisha watu wawili. When the Nigeria. So one time she calls me and says, Umebakisha <laughs> So that, that was, looking back, that was funny. Yeah. Like, how do you give money so that you go to Nigeria to see someone? And now she's been taken away from our lives. And I was scared, Lynn. At this point, I'm pregnant. I've been given instructions. You need to get pregnant within the next six months. Otherwise, you will miss your destiny. This woman has the guts to even dictate your bedroom, you and your husband. 
six months if you don't get married mother if you don't get pregnant if you don't get pregnant sorry you may lose your destiny oh god and you will make the man of god stagger oh wow towards his destiny mm -hmm. so a child became paramount paramount i had to get pregnant and i'm this kind of a person i would not want to be in your way if god wants you to go this way and i can hold your hand to end evil i'm not blocking you i'm not blocking you that's just who i am and mm. I, i will not want mm. i wish you the best let's go mm. and so in this case i say this man of god we are going far i believe that word is still valid let's go let's get a child so at this point he's told to go to for prayer 40 days of prayer in south africa that's what he told me so he gets an air ticket goes I don't know what that was about because I can pray in the bathroom and God can hear me. But telling me you're going for 40 days of prayer and is a partner that's sponsoring that it didn't make sense to me. Mm -hmm. Whatever. You cool. know I kept doing this yes. to so many things. And when he came back I conceived. And now that's the time uh, I told prophetess I'm pregnant. She was so happy. You know what's up if it's genuine ha 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 what 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 what, what all those emojis and i was like yeah she's happy i can't wait to get home to tell my husband when i got home Julie, by the way i have something to tell you i'm pregnant and he was on his phone okay it was not a big deal to him and i told god i will love this child looks like This is my responsibility. And whatever seasons are lying ahead of us, oh, yes, because I can sense something is not right, mm. but we will make it with my child. Again prophetess comes. Imagine filling the house with people and all that and we barely have food to eat. At times she comes, gets my husband every morning they just leave and I'm pregnant. They just leave and go, yeah, you go minister. And I'm left with nothing in the house. I've fed the guests. They've gone. I don't have food. And I kept praying for my child. I told God if you don't carry us through, I don't have anyone. My pregnancy continued by the grace of God. Very healthy pregnancy. No complications to which I give God all the glory because we didn't even have money for the hospital. I went activated my NHIF. Thank you government of Kenya. Activated my NHIF and it's what to care of the birth of my child. Thank God nothing came up mm. and that bill was sorted. Mm. So this cycle continues and now by the time I'm giving birth partner A is out. Support is out. The car is gone. And at this point prophetess is not coming back to our house. You hear she has come back there in Ngong Road in an apartment. That's where we go to see them. Now you see we we've not paid rent. You know there is there is so many problems. And that's where I asked my ex, if this woman is up to good with us, this is the point we should have seen her presence. With all the monies and finances we have funded her ministry. This is the point she's supposed to rise and be the mother she is. and walk with us but when partner a left prophet has left they would come with her family and you'd hear an apartment has been paid mm. and all that mm. and you would go whatever mm. so at this point rent is a problem i have a young child i don't know what to do rent is a problem so fast forward i go to a point and i said this man we are going far And I have an acre of land back home. And I told him, you see that land I keep talking about that dad said is mine. I think we are going to sell it. Because I want to support you. At this point, Lynn rent is piling up. 25k is not something small. You see that we have 4 months unpaid, you know? some partner somewhere uh, the, the, these small small partners he would try gather money from them is not so you see 
areas keep building, keep building. And I'm like, if I'm truly a supportive wife, this is what I'm supposed to do. At his low moment, let me try and do something. And so we came up with a plan. On this, I don't blame him. Yes. It was... Tulikuwa pamoja. Tulikuwa pamoja. Okay. And I told him, we're going to talk to dad. And we're going to tell him, I'll sell that piece of land. And once I sell it, we are buying another piece of land near Nairobi. You see, home is Nakuru. Mm-hmm. Near Nairobi. And once we do that, we will farm from close by. Nampango ilikuwa kulipa rent. Kai. Looked for a buyer through my sister and my brothers. Luckily, we found a buyer. After finding a buyer, and I'm the, when they are finding the buyer for me, they have no idea what I'm about to do with that money. Sold my piece of land, 500,000 shillings. And I told my prince, don't mention to the prophetess about this. About this. This is me as your wife supporting you. And if this goes, I don't have anything else I can do for you. This is the point I want to help you. Please don't share. Imagine he did. By the time I sold the land, an instruction, if there is a word I hate to date, instructions, an instruction came. So a tithe of 20%, half a million, 20%. Guy. That's 100,000. 100K. Gone. The next thing she says, I have problems with my passport and I need 30,000 shillings. And this one I'll refund. Let's just say, prophetess, my 30K, I'm still waiting. <laughs> it was never refunded. <laughs> wow. It pains me. Yeah. Then the next thing, um, some, I think 150K, a seed destiny or something like that. So that seed. By the end of all that drama, I think we were left with 180,000 shillings. At this point, my child has no clothes. Do you know by the time I was giving birth, there's a friend of mine who called me to her house and gave me girl's clothes. Her, her, her child was a girl. And your child is a boy. And my child is a boy. And this girl tells me, you know rompers, those ones that have to me go. Anybody can wear them. So I went back to so many of them. The girl was like a year old at this point. So you see, my child has no clothes. So badala kwenda kununua shamba. You want to dress your child first, you know? Should not have been a priority. But as a mother, no, that's what I was beating in my heart at that point. Because there are people who criticize me, like, shouldn't you have invested? But surely as a mother. I wanted to dress the shame of my son at that point. So that's what I did. I bought him clothes and then paid rent. My arrears cleared, cleared. And that's how my land money. And within four months, lean, we were being kicked out of the house. And something else I did, I bought furniture. At, oh my God, I have so much. <laughs> At one point, when we got married, he he got, he bought furniture, mm-hmm. some furniture worth fifteen thousand mm-hmm. through the through partner A mm-hmm. uh, after like one and a half months. Mm-hmm. So one point came where he said God has instructed him to give away all the furniture in the house to a certain son in the ministry. And this son, I, I don't recall if he had done anything or it was just God saying, mm-hmm. and I was like. God needs to tell me some of these things. Why doesn't he talk to me, you know, as a woman of the house? So by the time I'm selling my land, we've stayed in an empty house for nine months. Because instructions came. Because instructions came. And these instructions had a timeline. Like within three months, you will see what God will do. Imagine nine months later, I said, God, you didn't do your part of three months. I think I'll do it. And I bought furniture with my land money. I filled the house with furniture. And this furniture was chosen by prophetess. 
this is the kind of furniture I want, you know, mm. blah, blah, blah. That was before partner A is gone. So by the time partner A is gone, we have furniture, we're okay, we've, we've done that, and then I've sold the land and we've paid some of the areas. Mm. Four months, we're kicked out. So fast forward, after these four months, we're kicked out, and this woman is nowhere to be found. And I asked my husband, what is she saying? What, what is God saying? You know, you know you've, you're so used to God speaking. What is God saying about this? Nothing. So we are kicked out and we're given four hours to vacate. Vacate is the word? Yes. Yeah, four hours. When we moved, we went to Kasarani. She got to know we've gone to Kasarani. And it's a bishop who helped us. He spoke to one of his washirika and told them, host these people for me. This is my daughter. This is a man of God who had worked with me in music ministry. Before you met Before this. Before I met this guy. Okay. So I introduced them and at this point they are now in touch. Mm -hmm. So he's like, help this couple. So he gets us a two bedroom, imagine, and says, stay there until you heal. Do you know what conversation mm -hmm. my husband and prophetess are having? That this bishop wants you to be his son. Get out. I was like, goodness. So we've moved from Tendegua to Kasarani. And within a week, we are given instructions. Go back to Tendegua. That's where you belong. And you're living in a house you've been given. You see how messy it can become. This person is controlling everything that concerns you. To a point, you, you, you're like zombies. You don't even know what you want in life anymore. You've been helped lean. This person wants you to heal. Stay there until you heal. You're not paying rent. You're not paying rent. And now you need to move from and there. And now you need to move from there because he has an agenda. He wants to have you as his children. That's her fear. That's now her go back to the Ndegwa. Go back to the Ndegwa. Please tell me you did not go back. We did. Kai. We did. We moved back. My husband was borrowing. Borrowing people in order for us to move. Within, I think, 10 days, we didn't do two weeks in that house, that free house. We moved back to another place in the Degua. At this point, another partner in church is given instructions. You're the one who's supposed to pay rent for the next one year, and God will take you places. You will go far. Do you know Lynn, that guy paid our rent for six months, Akashindwa? And I cried for his heart. And I told God, don't allow him to be bitter. Because by the time he was starting to pay our rent, he was good. By the time he was stopping, he was bitter. He was bitter. And he was not doing okay financially. Imagine you wonder, Kwani is God. He's, he's giving timelines, but people are getting more desperate. People are getting more desperate. If they try to come in and, and those instructions, it's not going anywhere. Even in, my, in myself, I can't see anything. Like these destinies we've been given for all these years, in the next six months, it's getting worse. And at this point, I was like, I forgot to say, when I got married, I was asked to keep off from my family. Like, don't, don't get in touch with your family. You come from a very promiscuous family. I don't know where that came from. Separate yourself. They are sinners. That was from prophetess to me. So I had not been in touch. You see all this drama. I had not been really in touch with, with, my, family. with my family. And at this point, I started saying, God, my sister was right. But because if I share with her, she will go telling everybody to, to confirm that she was right. I'll start with my dad. So at this point, I reached out to my father and my dad started talking to me. When I shared, I, I was like uh, a radio, you know, a tape, a tape recording. Was this the first time you were connecting to your yes. dad about this? Yes, yes. And I... I poured my heart out. We spoke for like two hours. I poured my heart out to him. And he says, oh my God, this is a Jezebel spirit. He spoke to himself like that, but I had. And he's like, my daughter, it's time to fight. He asked me, how is your spirit? Are you ready to fight? 
I want you to fight for yourself. You're coming out of this, this place. He was not for the idea of get out of your marriage. He was like, rise up from this place, rise up. And my father started inputting um, strength and the word of God, speaking the word of God to me. And by this time, I'm so scared. I like, touch not my anointed. How am I going to do this? Do my prophets no harm? So I started getting courage to start fighting. So from this point, if instructions came that were not scriptural, yes. I would fight back. And what he would do, as always, he would tell her. So I became an enemy yeah. to both my husband and the prophetess. And the prophetess. So it was so hard. When someone sees that you're rebelling what they're trying to enforce on you, they begin to punish you indirectly. And you will be so scared. And this is what has held so many people in abusive situations, religious abuse. You're fed with this fear that you do not know. Like you feel like the moment you, you just pull your leg out of it, you're dead. It's like lightning will come it's and like just strike you and you will die immediately. You. Yes. And I started relying on my dad's strength mm -hmm. because I didn't know how to pray. Yes. At this point, the thought of God was so confusing in my heart. Because I want to ask, yeah, what's the difference be between how your dad mm -hmm. spoke about the word mm -hmm. and this word mm -hmm. that you are being given by these people? My dad's word had no strings. Mm -hmm. It had no strings and it was life. What this woman would, would tell us is that, you see, partner A, eh? in the next six months, watch her life, you know, watch her life and you will see how she will fall. You see that fear? Mm. In my dad, there was life. He was calling life out of it. But this other side was calling doom, doom. doom. and death and destruction. Mm. So most people are scared of getting out of that because fear is fed into them. Mm -hmm. And they feel like God hates me. It's like people are made to think that God is this old man with a stick. The moment you say no to something, he will hit you. Yes. But we serve a very loving God. We are his image. We are his image. Look inside you. Yes. That's, my, that's you. Exactly. My dad used to tell me, how many times do you cry at night? And I told him, every day, I, sl I sleep crying, dad. And he was like, do you know God is crying as you cry, mother? Do you know God is crying as you cry? See yourself in that. He raised the value I, s I have in God that had been so destroyed. Remember, my voice was yes. nothing. Yes. My dad made me remember the value that I carry. Mm. And this carried me. I started saying no to so many things. Yeah. And at this point, even in church, I'm an enemy to people. Because, you know, people have been told, hey, rebellion. These people are told, you're rebellious. And people are recruited. Do you know that is narcissistic abuse? People are recruited to hit back at you. Because you're trying to raise a voice of reason into what is going on. And most people who have left churches are lonely because crowds are against them. And if you listen to the story, they have a point. There's something they've seen that people are blinded about. So I become an enemy. At this point, Lynn, I'm getting sick. Ulcers started attacking me. And I would, there are times I would get home i'm on the floor and he will not take me to hospital that's how bad it was sometimes at my own needs i'm the one who is meeting them paying bills in the house at, at one point he's just like he doesn't care about it and i know it's not him it's the kind of information that he's getting like, mm. this girl is against you. So what happened? At one point, I said, I'll need to know what these people talk about. Now that I'm rebelling, mm. 
I want to know what they say. Sini rebel kabisa. Sini rebel kabisa. Yeah. I want to know what they say. And at this point my dad is lifting me mm. into boldness, lean and courage. Like that courage has carried me to where I am today. Good. So one point this guy is showering you know he was people say don't touch your husband's phone you know you if you see women talking about that you'll be like whoa mm-hmm. and that's what saved me mm. touching his phone yes <laughs> <laughs> yes because uh-huh. i said i want to know prophetess what do you tell my husband when you come to me you you are like yeah thank you for the tithe you know thank you you're very sweet and then the, the reactions i'm getting from this man he's not alone you guys are together i want to know what you are after one time when he was in the bathroom i took his phone searched her name went direct to her chats searched my name again in those chats <laughs> it was such a fast thing and it highlighted every other thing that has my name and i read all of them i was shocked lin this woman was telling my husband that girl is out to destroy you your best couple she was our best couple this girl is out to destroy you. Oh. You will go nowhere as long as you're with Martha. You will go nowhere in life. Those are the two things that crushed me. And I had him finishing the shower. I locked, exited, locked his phone and left it, put it back on the charging. And I cried. I cried. From that day, I never stepped into his church. And that was four months before I walked out of that marriage. So I cried and cried. And then it came to a point, I don't remember if it was two weeks or a month later, I confronted them. I wrote to her and I told her, I have discovered what you tell my husband. How can you tell him that he's not going anywhere with me? How can you tell him that I'm out to destroy him? And then you come laugh at me. And you then you with come, me? You come laugh at me and encourage me. What kind of mother are you? Those are the questions I asked her. From that day, I got blocked. That was four months before I walked out. So prophetess cannot uh, fight back. She cannot reply. She cannot, yeah. So she blocks. She blocks. Okay. So I confronted. Let's go on. And then she she and him that day, they slept at 3 a.m. chatting. Mm. They were both online. So I knew he's been told. Mm. So four months later, through my dad's prayer, through my dad's encouragement, wow through my dad's, you know, calling me forth. I told him one time when I was coming from work, at this point I found work. I was not supposed to look for work. So my rebelling, I looked for work. And by the grace of God, I got a job. Wow. So at this point, I I have the job. One time I'm coming from work and I got attacked at our gate is like 10 steps from the main gate two guys followed me and i don't know if he had a gun or a knife i leave that to that but there is something he wanted to take out of his pocket and attack me if i didn't give him my belongings so i threw the bag to him and started screaming they had a motorbike they were running they were riding away i ran after them screaming screaming so at this point through my house girl's number. Oh, you had a house girl Yes, now. yes. And it's my dad who is paying this house girl oh. at this point. Mm. So I called my dad. I told him, I've been attacked. And the fear I felt in his voice, he was shaking. He told me, my daughter, we are fighting this. We are fighting this. I love your dad. And imagine there is not one point he told me, get out of that marriage. But the second day after I'm done with replacing my ID, you know, NHIF, all those cards I had lost, I called him after I had got a Mm. kabambe. Mm. I called him and told him, Dad, I feel like I've reached the end. And I was so fearful because I didn't know what he would say. I feel like this marriage has drained me to the end. I cannot move on. Do you know what my dad told me? I've been waiting for those words for the last three or four years. I've been waiting and I could not have told you. It had to come from you. Because there are people who go through abuse. They keep crying to people like, what should I do? What should I do? But there are people who are quiet. 
because you have to get to that point where you are done by yourself by yourself nobody can get you out mm-hmm. and that's why you see people walk out of marriages and go back they were not done but i got into that place where i was done i felt like i'd lost everything are you even done. telling your husband you've been robbed his reaction what is he saying that day i called him through a neighbor yeah. i gave a neighbor his number yeah and this neighbor had witnessed the crime as it was happening and when this guy called him he said nikodika na hubiri na nitakuja baadaye wow yeah so now you are like telling your dad this is it yes and it's that those words those words made me feel useless in his eyes i felt useless in his life kama ni maybeiwa na unasema uko dhika unahubiri keep preaching the word and because i know what they've been talking like you won't go anywhere as long as this woman is in your life you see so i was like this is it i'm done so my dad says what's your plan what do you want from here i told him i want to go out i want i want to leave i want to leave and he said on saturday go look for a house i'll pay for you for three months is this what you want i told him yeah this is what i want three months my dad paid my house and with all the arrears in this house when i told my ex that i'm i'm going to leave allow me to leave to safety i didn't tell him i have plans to exit I told him allow me to live to safety. Give me at least one couch. Remember ni vitu nilinunua. So I didn't have to ask, but because of the respect, I said give me just one. I need to move to safety. Do you know what he told me? You clear the arrears first if you're to move. You need to pay the arrears. He's not begging you to stay. No. Clear the house arrears first if you're supposed to move. And I was like goodness is not my job any time i've done it is to help you it's not my job to do that and in my heart i told god i'm done let me lose everything but i've not lost myself i've not lost my life i think stuff can be gotten later and that's how i walked out of that marriage and the day I told him we are, we are living on Saturday. He thought we were going to Nakuru for Christmas. It was 21st or 22nd. Mm. And in my head at, at this point dad has already paid the house for me, a deposit somewhere. So I only left with a backpack and my child. And that's how we moved and went to begin life. How child. did that feel like walking out? <laughs> I felt like I had lost everything. everything as i was going to the stage i looked at the sacrifices i had made the first sacrifice losing my family losing my dreams yeah losing i looked at how happy i was <laughs> when i met these people i was fulfilled mm. serving god but at this point thank you i've literally lost everything i looked at my son having grown up without a father it was not my choice for my son to go through the same without a present father mm. I had always told God, I will build a good family. My children will never be fatherless. fatherless. They will not grow with absent fathers. And so as I'm walking with him, I'm like, this is the beginning for you being with an absent father. But God encouraged my heart like I raised you, Martha. I can raise this one also. and uh the fact that i was alive and that even you know that mugging you know bad things happen in mugging and the fact that i was alive 
I was not hurt. You could have lost your life. Yeah. Because this touching my anointed, yes. someone would really have rejoiced mm. if I got hurt in yeah. that. They would have used that they as would a have used lesson. That. Yes. You see what happened yes. to her? She touched the anointed. Exactly. What did you see happening to her? Exactly. Dear Lord. And I told God, because you've protected me from that, I'll hide myself in you. And the fact that I have a job, I will work so hard. And with time, I'll recover. Yeah. Let me just say, four years later, I have not recovered what I lost. Oh. I've not recovered. I'm, I'm not where I want to be, but I'm not where I used to be. And that is something I thank God for every day. <laughs> And sometimes, even with, you know, as a single mother, even with the rent, all these bills, there are still times you get to a place. Mm -hmm. You don't even have enough food, you know, but you keep sacrificing for the sake of the child. And by the grace of God, God has used my dad so much. We don't talk for weeks. Like we can take three weeks. He's praying for us. And the moment we get in touch, mm -hmm. do you have food? For the next one month, you know, like w what you need just just for food. Forget about everything, just for food. So I thank God. Mm. So when COVID came, we are just locked down. I can't go to Nakuru. I received divorce papers. He had gone to court and he had filed a divorce. And in that divorce paper, I read it. I was like, you stay here divorce petition and I'm here. Who is this person that is being accused? I was accused of adultery. I slept with men known and unknown during the marriage. And I'm like, goodness. Number two, I was um, cruel, cruelty. I had, uh, I was cruel to him. And I asked God, who is this woman? that's being spoken about here. Anyway, long story short, I fought back. Thank you. The person he had sent, the court server, came to tell me that I needed to accept the accusations so that the case can end in three months. And I'm like, I am not, I'm not in a hurry. Three months for what? And then I'm not saying yes to something I am not. This has to go on record. To something, something I, I am, am not. not. Yes. And that is what led me to fight. Lynn, I had to take a loan to get a lawyer to fight back. He just wanted me to sign and say acknowledge yes. so that the process goes through. And I said, I've never slept with a man apart from you. What are you talking about? If there is anything that led me to want to fight is that one. Because I knew in my heart, I was not unfaithful. Known and unknown. Known and unknown. So who are these known? I don't know. Prove it. Yes, prove it. So I fought back, went to court. And when I did the response, the guy never showed up in court. He never showed up. So the last time the lawyer tells me now that these people have been delaying us, we're going to book a date. Imagine in 2022, since 2020, it's just a delay, a delay. 2022. The lawyer now books a, books a day and the, the, the divorce was granted because wow. you're supposed to have been separated three years. Yes. That is enough ground yes. for it to end. And so I told God, it's okay. Yeah. The court has a record mm. that I fought back. Yeah. And in my heart, your conscience will fight you for the rest of your life for the accusations mm. that you made. Mm. And you forgot the sacrifices how I left everything. Men should appreciate women who accept a proposal. This woman has said, whatever I was, with whoever I was, goodbye to that. And for now, let's join together and move on. And if that was not anything to you, it's okay. It's okay. Yeah, it's okay. So I fought back and that's how the case ended. So we were granted divorce on the final paper. It's called the decree absolute. Mm. Mm. It was granted on the last week of September. And you know, on 2nd or 1st October, he had a wedding.
his. Yeah. So well, the divorce. Uh -uh. I wanna do my maths. The last paper was in September. Yeah, the end of September. And so we always go to September, October. The first week of October. Yes, the he, first Saturday of October. He was wedding someone else. Yes. Yes, Lynn. I was relieved that he is out of my way. Yeah. But the insensitivity was real. Like, have you ever felt trashed? That's, that's, those are the thoughts that came back to me. Like, you even, that's why you wanted it to end in three months. Because you, you were doing stuff. You were busy. And I can't blame you because we were separated. But you're accusing me of things that you could be the very person doing them. Doing them. Mm. And your child, do you share <sighs> the custody? Can you imagine the time I'm finding out that he's getting married next week? on Saturday, he's with my child. And it's someone who calls me and tells me, do you know there's a wedding going on and your ex is getting married? And do you know the child is getting exposed to very negative information? Can you get your child back? Imagine I'd given him the child to, for him to have the boy for a week. I've been very generous, by the way. I didn't want our battles to go to the, that. Child. Yeah, I didn't want. Mm. On that, I asked God for special maturity because the bitterness was real. But those who know my child and his father, they know they've been together. And I told God, give me special grace for this because I don't want this boy to fight battles that don't belong to him. So by the time I'm finding out, he was with the boy. And I told him, I want the child back tomorrow. There's no way you're planning a wedding and you didn't tell me. And he's like, who said that I owe you an explanation of anything I do? I said, yeah, you are right. But the child is involved here. You cannot be planning a wedding running around. Sir, you cannot do that. When a child is with you, you could have told me. I would have given you six, one year. You know, settle down with your new family and leave my child out of this. And that's how I got the child back. And from that time, Lynn, I haven't had the grace to let the boy go. So it's been, it's been a season of looking for Martha. Trying to find, where did I lose her? Especially on my relationship with God. Let's go there. That was affected. When you have someone you look up to in the things of God and they mishandle you, you feel like it's God who has mishandled you. God is so misrepresented in the church. Prophetess would call someone to her house and prophesy over them. The moment they leave, she would start speaking ill of them. Lean you wonder. What kind of God is this? At one point he's speaking good of me. The other point is he's against me, you know? Because that's all the picture I had. Mm. Prophetess would come to Kenya to, to people's marriages, wedding days. And by the time we're leaving that wedding in the evening, the woman has the guts to say, those two are not meant to be together. And six months down the line, is a victim. You come join, come make sure they're getting married, follow up on their wedding. Once they get married, imagine you begin prophesying their breakup. They're not meant to be together. And this prophecy, you're prophesying the breakup of people because they're not doing what you want. If she sees your wife and you're the guy, your wife is a problem to her goals, she will begin prophesying a split. I saw around seven couples going through divorce 
and prophetess hands were involved. Oh God. Yes. And I tried opening the eyes of my ex and they never opened. So now they are still together? I don't know. I cannot really tell. Yes. I'd be lying because yeah. I was blocked at that point and I chose to mind my business. I chose to heal, to go and look for myself. I love that. And I said, you guys, you do you, whatever you are up to, continue. Yes. This is my life mm. and this is my child looking mm. up to me. And if I don't style up right now, mm. my child has no future mm. because now this is me. And I thank God that he has given me the grace to just continue doing everything I can to get to that place where nobody else matters. It's just me and God. How are you guys? <sighs> we are okay. But the, the child, the child still has questions. Because the father loves him. I cannot come here and lie that, oh, they, he mistreats the boy. No, he, no, doesn't. I, he doesn't. He doesn't. So the boy does not understand if dad really loves me. How old is he now? He's now eight. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So he doesn't understand. Like, like the other day he was doing homework and there was a question, who is the head of your family? And he came to my room and he's like, mom, what should I write here? Who is the head of my family? Should I say mother or father? I told him, write both, mother and father. Mm. And he's like, no, 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 no. You need to answer this question. Mm. So you can tell the guy is, he, the young man is wondering, you know. But I'm in that place of sending God to that heart. Yes. Like, come through. Yeah. The way you did for me, come through come through to this boy mm -hmm. and reach out to him at a level that he will understand. Mm -hmm. And as time goes by, when the questions continue, I'll begin answering slowly by slowly. Yes. Because I would not want him to be bitter yeah. with his father. Yeah. Lean, if there is a battle I have chosen, I say, this is between me and you. The child, he will not be involved. Mm -hmm. If he wants to come and visit you, let yeah. him do that. Yeah. But he will not fight my battles yeah. with the father. Yeah. So we are in that place of one day at a time, trusting God. I thank God the job I found that time, I'm still there. Oh, really? Yes. Good job. Yeah. May you grow. Yeah. Yeah. May and you I grow. really thank God. There's a question I know my audience are struggling with. Yeah. You say your prince was a pastor. Yes. So... Does he have a church or he's just a pastor walking around he has with the a title? Church. Mm. He has a church. Mm. He has a church and it, people used to ask me, so did he close the church now that you guys went separate? Lynn, it continued like I was dead. Nothing stopped. Of course. Imagine losing your life for that. And when you walk out, everything is going on like you like didn't you never, exist. Like you were never there. Yeah. And that's why I tell you, man, choose yourself. Choose you. Over and over and, and over, over and again. Over again. Choose yourself. Because one of the battles I fought in my heart, what will the washirika do when I leave? Do you know by the time you're walking out of a marriage, you've, you, you've left seven times? Yes. Yes. Six, seven times yes. in your Emotionally, head. Emotionally, you are gone. You're gone. You're gone mentally. You're Ulisha gone toka. mentally. Ulisha enda mm. Kabisa. Mm. And by the time you want to take this physical step, so many questions hold you back. Mm. What will the washirika do? Yes. What will they say? Yes. Will they get hurt? Mm. Will their faith be shaken? Mm. Oh my goodness. Mm. Nothing. Nothing. In fact, when I left, I used to meet people who used to call me, Mom! I used to meet them in town. And someone wants to spit on you. This is one year, close to one year after I left. And I usually tell wow. women, if you would know, you're losing yourself. And once you're gone, that's it. That's it. Your story will not even be relevant to anybody. Choose yourself. Mm. Choose yourself. Yeah. I may not be where I want to be, Lynn. But I thank God. I'm not where I used to Amen. be. Ulcers is a gone case. Amen. I don't struggle with ulcers anymore because I have the peace of God. The peace, you know, peace mm. that 
surpasses human yes. understanding, yes. you don't even understand mm. it yourself. Mm. That is what I have been writing on. Yeah. And I am grateful. How are you and God? <sighs> we are working <laughs> together. <laughs> we are working together because I've gone through a lot of rejection. You know, as a gospel artist, you know how you get invited this and that place. Yes. I can tell you, Lynn, for the last three or four years, I've not been invited to sing anywhere. Because people, that divorcee, you know? Stop right here. So many thousands of people will watch this show. Yeah. They won't see a divorcee. Yeah. They won't see a single mom. Yeah. They will see Martha. Yeah. Who God gave a, gave a gift. Yeah. And whose voice whose yes. voice will never be forgotten shake our audience yeah i've never asked anyone to do this on the show mm -hmm. bless them with a song okay. until you stop mm -hmm. that's when i'll talk okay. bless them do not wait to be invited anywhere yeah today you are speaking to thousands of people yeah. whose hearts you can still bless with your art yeah bless them Take it away. We don't have to wait for years. Mm. We don't have to wait for 10 years for you to be invited in a stage with people. These are people watching. Yeah. That which you've kept. The one day when I make it to the stage again, I, I want you to know. You don't know their faces. Mm. But they are vouching for you. Yeah. And no one can take. You know, I tell people when God gives you a gift, he will take care of it. True. God will take care of your gift even without you being invited anywhere. Mother, yeah. as you find yourself, take it away. Thank you. Naam kuliko walinzi wango javyo asubuhi Nafsi yangu ya kungoja na kuliko walinzi wango javyo asubuhi nafsi yangu ya kungoja wale wote Wango jao bwana watafanywa upya kubu zao maishani wale wote wango jao bwana Watafanywa upya ngubu zao maishani na kuliko walinzi wango javyo asubuhi nasiyanko yes Kungoja. Yes. Na kuliko walinzi. Yes. Wangoja vio asubuhi. Nafsi yangu ya kungoja. Amen. Amen. That's who you are. Is who? <sighs> yeah. yeah. That is who you are. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Don't forget that. Yeah. You know who you are? Before someone told you who you could be, mm. I, I like going back to my innocent years when I would sit like this in a chair and practice with my dolls. Yeah. And I look back <laughs> and I'm like, people can see it now. Mm. 
Mm. Now it's happening. Yeah. But you sang to God and for God before you are told who you are. Yeah. Don't let them put labels on you. Mm. Don't let them put labels on you. Look at you. Gorgeous and free. Yeah. You are free. All right? Yeah. You are same my concert nilini. Uone sisi watu wa elenen tukikuja. Yeah. Hata kama tutalipa so 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 555 kuingia. Yeah. We will come. Yeah. Just tell us when. Yeah. Where we can even do it here. Yeah. I can tell my people to come and they can even come and we can do it here. Yeah. You get it. Thank you. Yeah. Actually I think maybe we need to do that. Yeah. Maybe you just need to do an entire mini performance for people. Yeah. Right? Yes. And I will let them know when you are ready. Okay. Don't wait for them to call you. Yeah. Go out there. Yeah. And do what you are supposed to do, right? Yes. Yeah. No, you've not spoken to yourself for a long time. <sighs> no. And you know, one day I had my guest here and I told her, look at yourself in this mirror and talk to yourself. Assume there is a mirror in front of you. What would you like to say to yourself? Dear mother. Dear mother. Mm. You're stronger than you think. Yes. The fact that um, you've not given up on yourself when everything yes. wanted you to do that. You're stronger than you think. And you know who you are yeah. inside. You've just been having so much coming at you. Mm. But who you are has not changed. And the timing is right. The timing is right. For who you are to come out. Especially your talents and gifts. God. And the true mother. The timing is right. Yes. The timing is right. And your yeah. name is Mother. Yes. All right? Yeah. That name holds so much. Yeah. Your name is Mother. Your yeah. beautiful boy will watch this one day. Yeah. What do you want him to know? Oh, my son. You've kept me going. If I was alone, I think I would have given up. My son, you've kept me going. Yeah. You've given me a reason to work hard. Mm -hmm. Just thinking about your tomorrow makes me want to keep going. The hugs and kisses that you give me every day give me the reason to want to make you happy. Amen. I've been through a lot. You've also been through a lot. Equally. Yeah. Because when I didn't have food, you didn't have food. When I didn't have clothes to wear, you didn't have clothes to wear. And I appreciate that you're my son. Yes. Because you've given me a reason. Amen. To continue living. Amen. And uh, never hate your father because this was about me and him. Amen. It was not about you and him. Yeah. And uh, because he loves you, <laughs> feel free. Yes. And uh, you've made me want to leave. And I thank God. Yes. Yeah. Keep pushing. I thank God for 
the tough times. Mm. Thank God for everything we lost because it's not life that we lost. Yeah. It's just things that we can get. Good. So the fact that we have life, yeah. we are not limited. And God is not done with us. Good. And He's not He's not done with us. Yeah. If God would ask people who should live and who should not, mm. I think we'd be gone. But God does not ask people who to bless. He does not ask for instructions. He does not ask for instructions. He does not um he does not look at people's opinion of you in order for you to to have life. Mm. Because he is God. Yes. He's not a respecter of persons. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, men of God would be living in this world and people who are not men of God yeah. would we be nothing. We will be gone. Would be gone. Mm. But because God is not a respecter of persons, good. We are here today. We are here, Cindy. Yeah. So many people are caught up in this you no know, religion, this whole brainwashing, this whole mess. Yeah. This whole mess. And yeah. you know me I always say in my show I will say the truth. Yeah. You know, sometimes I get messages from people, Lynn, you're not scared. Mm -hmm. I am like who told you I am scared? Yeah. Me, I want them to quote me even when I'm not in this world yeah. anymore. Yeah. I am not scared. Mm -hmm. I know who is within me. Yeah. I am not scared. Yeah. And this conversation is something people don't touch. They don't. Because this is someone's unga. Yeah. Exactly. But so many people are caught in this, entangled in this mm -hmm. whole mess. Yeah. Because this is not the word of God. It is not the word of and God. And I will go back and tell people, interpret the word of God for yes. yourself. Yes. Yes. Just as I said, mm. John 3.16. Yeah. So easy for us to master. Yeah. There is no complicated grammar in the Bible. Yeah. If anything, revised versions. Yeah. Simpler languages, translations. Yeah. Mm -hmm. People need to be able to interpret this word for themselves. Yeah. But you've been there. Yeah. You've seen the emotional damage. Oh it can cause someone. Because this is the form of abuse no one wants to talk about. Yeah. Religious abuse. Yeah. Oh, men of God. Oh, my mom, today, my dad. Oh, mom, dad, mom, dad. No one wants to talk about these things. Yeah. But you've lived it. Yeah. You said if this is what you had to go through so that one person can learn. Can learn. Mm -hmm. Please talk to those people who are in this mess right now. Yeah. And maybe, unfortunately, some of them mm -hmm. will never come out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You're being abused. You're being used and misused. And you don't want to acknowledge it. And you will only realize the damage if God would give you an opportunity to see what is in the heart of those people that you adore. God is jealous. And as long as his glory in your life is going to someone else, you're going nowhere. You will give what you want to give. You will keep obeying instructions. But God is out there looking out and wondering when will this child of mine know that I am the ultimate? Yes. When will this child of mine open their Bibles? People are going to Nigeria, Zimbabwe to hear the word of God, to hear God and their Bible is closed. It's the only book whose author is present as you read it. Just open it 
and you will get all that an air ticket will not give you. The money you are losing yeah. in all this drama is not worth it if you only get to know what is he saying. Prophecy is good, Lynn, but a prophet will, should come to confirm what you know. If someone comes to tell you something and it is strange to you, they are coming after you. And the more it sounds strange, the more you will yield in order to understand what it is that they are trying to say. Mm -hmm. But when you already know, for the next six months, God wants me to study his word daily, to pray daily, so that he will release what he has for me. That's that simple and clear. But people don't want to do that. People want to go and hear these strange things out there. And God is just in this closed Bible. Yeah. So don't run all over. But the damage that you're taking yourself through yeah. by yielding to things you have no idea and God is out there just wondering, when will my child come back? And that is an unfortunate place. People who are walking with God, they are so alone, but so contented. I'm in that place right now. Like, it doesn't matter. I have the creator of the universe. Yes. Like, it's me and him. Yes. He knows, mm -hmm. and he's involved, mm -hmm. and he's aware. And that is security enough, other than you going to buy a broom. Mm -hmm. You buy a broom, you place it in your house. It's like you adore that broom more than, you know, what you're supposed to do. You adore that broom more than just opening scripture and reading and hearing what God has. So people are doing all manners of idolatry. You're doing idol worship and your Bible is closed. If the church can come to a place, I can only speak for Christianity because I'm one. If the church can come to a place where if you want to hear God, open your Bible, it's enough. And when you go to church, if your pastor hears God, he will confirm what God told you in the morning. Yes, he will. Mm. And you won't be lost. Mm. And that way you become a team mm. with God. Mm. Because he knows, he has the blueprint yes. of your life. Yeah. He knows five years to come what he wants for you. Mm -hmm. And he'll continue to unfold it into you as you seek him. But people don't want to go that mm -hmm. They want these cheap things, cheap things. And the moment you engage the first time, yeah. you keep going. Mm -hmm. And it's a cycle you may not be able to break. Mm -hmm. And my heart aches for the Magu family. Because I believe maybe, just maybe, he got to a place he felt. Getting out of this life is the only way out. Like, it's a cycle that is unbreakable. But you have to be very strong in order for you to say no. Yeah. And prepare to walk alone. Yeah. Because it's a lonely journey when you know the truth and you stand by the truth, Lynn. It can get lonely. I know. But you have the backup of heaven. And you can move. You can move. And that is where I am right now. Mm -hmm. And I continue to trust God every day. Yes. And I know mm. it's getting better. Amen. I don't want you to give up on your art. Yeah. I don't want to give it to you to give up on what God has put inside you. Yeah. yeah. You get it. Yes. I want you to go out there and conquer. Yeah. And give us this beautiful music. Yeah. I've seen it on your YouTube channel. Yeah. It's beautiful. Thank you. And the fact that you are doing this before people even came into your life. Yes. You know, yeah. I always say, say mm. I don't regret lessons in life. It's, it's what makes us us. It's true. You know, who knows where your life will end up. It's true. Who knows how many souls you've saved just true. by sharing your story. Yeah. You know, who yeah. knows who you are bound to become yes. after this. Yes. So more grace to you, Amen. more love and light to you. Amen. I want you to tell our people where they can find you. Yeah. 
how they can be able to contact you, yeah. which contact details you are comfortable with. Yeah. But before that, mm -hmm. is there anything you feel like we left out that we need to still touch on? Uh, I think I've, I've tried my best yeah. to get as detailed as yes. possible. Yeah. Maybe the only thing is I'm working on forgiveness. You know, people tell you, get over it. It's done. It's done. No, get wow. over it. But they forget it took a long time yes. to go into that. Yeah. And it takes time also to rebuild mm. what you almost lost. Mm. So I'm working on forgiveness. Yeah. I'm not there yet. Yeah. Lynn, take I'll your time. Lying. I'll take my time. And I pray that I'll get there. Yeah. yeah. I'm sorry for what you went through. Thank you. I'm sorry for what you went through. Thank you. May healing find you. May it locate you. Yeah. All right? Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Good. Where can people find you? So I've been sharing my story on my channel. Mm. And uh, I, I want this to get to the farthest corners of the earth. Because prophets are everywhere. Men of God are everywhere. Mm. And girls are everywhere. Mm. <laughs> so I've wanted my story to reach out to people. So I have a YouTube channel yeah. that I share my story. Let me start with the music yes. one. Yeah. Because that's, that's my biggest. Mm. It makes me glad. Mm. My music channel is called Martha Rena. Mm. Rena is R-E-N-A. Mm -hmm. That's a stage name. It's yeah. not my real name. Yeah. So Martha Rena, please go and subscribe. already. <laughs> <And, laughs> yeah. yeah. So please go and subscribe. Yeah. And I want to, to let this go. What is in my heart? I have so much music to give. And I'm trusting God to just keep releasing it. Amen. Regardless of the past regardless yes. i have so much yes. because the devil wants to steal what you have yeah but god just protects it yes and i feel that it's mm. in there mm. so please uh pray for me as i move on into more production of music yes. to the glory of god Amen. the second one is my my channel my my stories channel yes. it's called Matharina stories and testimonies yes there I just share my story, you know, the traumas. I just try to process stuff. Yeah. It's not as perfect, but yes. it's just my way of letting go yes. and for people to learn from my yes. story and what happened and everything. Yeah. So if you're going through divorce, separation, yes. mm. childhood issues, mm. healing the inner child, I just go there. Sometimes I just go and rant, you yes. know, and, and that's what has healed me yeah. a lot. Yes. Because when you don't have so many friends that you talk to, mm. that has been like that place of letting stuff mm. go. Mm. So please go ahead and just subscribe on that. Yes. And then if you want to reach out to me, you can send me an email on matharina yeah. 21 that's one, uh, yes. matharina21 at gmail.com. Yeah. And I also, my phone number, yeah. is it okay if I give that? If you're okay with it. Okay, I can mm -hmm. give it out because mm -hmm. I have another private one. Yeah. It's 0727-722-592. Okay. That's the, the number on all my channels. Yes. It's the number on all my music channels. Yeah. So if I don't answer your call, give me time. I'll get back to you. But that's the number that you can reach out to me. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. More grace to you. Thank when are you, you hitting the studio again? Should be end of January. End of That's January. That's my goal. Yeah. Yay. Yes. I don't have much. Yeah. But mm -hmm. I'll take care of your audio oh, oh. and a video for one of your songs. Oh, thank you. I don't you. have my but thank I feel you. the need to tap into oh, your blessing. Oh my goodness! Thank you. You know, so when you settle, yeah, just let me know. Thank you. Yes. You Thank are God Thank you. Who says I'm at Naviana instructions? Me, I am telling you. Yeah. Wait and see. Yeah. You you are yet to see. Amen. The reason for this testimony. I believe. You no, know, so. the reason for the test. Yes. Can you are yet to witness the testimony I behind believe, it. I believe. Amen. With all my heart. Yes. The best is yet. To okay. Come. Yeah. Go out there and conquer. Yes. Just as you are conquering. Amen. Blossom. Amen. Blossom, mother. Amen. Blossom. Amen. We are 80% loading. Yeah. We will be 100%. So, okay. Amen. Wishing you all the best, my friend. Thank you. Yes. May Thank you continue you. being a voice of reason. Thank you. Yeah. I 
Yeah. No God is proud this conversation happened. I can feel it here. Thank you. It's all over here. He's Thank happy you for this the honor. happened. Thank you for Cindy the honor. I appreciate yes. you also. Yes. Yeah. Shall we wind up? Yes. All right. Mm -hmm. My people. Thank you so much, so much, so much, so much for watching. If there are matters, I'm passionate about it, such matters, because the stories I've sat across, the people I've interviewed, and the people who have lost themselves in such things, one of them religion, they are many. But may that be not your portion. Guy, let that not be your portion. Eh? And even if it is, may God give you the grace to rise up again just like mother. Yeah. Now, to the men of God, the prophets and the prophetess who have seen a very beautiful here opportunity mm. to eat where they do not plant, to harvest where they have nothing to harvest from. People who have caused confusion to families, those who think that, oh, statements such as do not touch the anointed or cause them harm, you've used that to manipulate and brainwash people. Mm. Your yeah, day is also coming and it will not be plenty. It, no, it will not be pretty. Yeah. It's coming. It will not be pretty. But I cannot tell you the magnitude of doors that we are going to open with our stories. And this is why I say, me, I'm not scared of anything. Because what God has instructed me to use, allow me to use that word, yeah. though I know you hate it deeply. What God has instructed me to do in this world, I'm going to do it. Whether it annoys you or it makes you happy, I am going to do it. For every person, because again, as I said, that's the abuse we don't talk about, religious abuse. You know, for every person who is entangled in that mess, just know your Bible right there has all the answers you need. Mm -hmm. And God is just waiting to listen to you. You get it. Let's just have this conversation, people. Our people out here are suffering because of these men of God. Oh, my mom, my dad, man of God. You know, and as I said in the previous video, you have people who don't have anything to eat, but they are busy filling the pockets of their mom and dad. Now, me, I don't subscribe to that. That's not what the word says. Open your Bible. You are following everything else, but the only thing you are not doing is opening your Bible. Mm -hmm. Today, let the challenge be, open your Bible. Mm -hmm. Let the prophets come to confirm what's already there. Mm -hmm. His instructions, his isijuinini, our families are falling apart. Yeah. You can see then from the last video, how many people have said, oh my God, this is happening to my mom. She cannot listen to any of us. Mm -hmm. We are the enemies. Continue talking life into that person. Mm -hmm. As mother's dad did, he continued talking life into her chaos. Mm -hmm. Continue talking life. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, MLK once said, I might be out of context, but he said something in regards to the silence of the good people. When the good people keep quiet, that's how we lose. The silence of the good people is dangerous. Get out there and use your voice to create awareness. And also, if you are just there letting evil prosper because you are scared, thou shall not touch the anointed. My friends, we perish because of lack of knowledge. Don't be scared. God did not give you the spirit of fear. He commanded you to command other things. Even ako kadogo, tuendo ujitafti, ndio msea kikama na kuambia hapa, I have been instructed, msho apana, hata verse flani nasema, kila mtu waende ya work hard. Go work. Even God worked and he rested a day. Go work. Go harvest where you know you've planted. It's about time you reflect and ask yourself, what kind of religion am I subscribing to? What kind of Christianity am I subscribing to? Do you even have answers as to why you keep calling people mom and dad, mom and dad, mom and dad? Do you even know why you're doing that? You know, and you can't even talk to your own parents. The, the mom and dad that actually gave birth to you, you won't talk to them. But you hear at just, you know, giving so much respect to someone who is not even blood. But you show them so much respect and love that you forget your own parents back at home. And let me tell you. 
what narcissism does because religious narcissists are also there they will separate you from your family yeah. so that when your family like mother sister start seeing one plus one is not making sense they can't talk to you mm -hmm. because they've already created a wall between you and the family yeah. stay woke all right thank you so much for watching this series let me know in the comment section what other conversation you would want us to start having Thank you for the love you showed heinous crime. I will try and bring such episodes, but I can't guarantee you I can do them weekly, maybe two times in a month. But thank you so much for watching and thank you so much for willing to have these hard conversations with us because this is how we change the world. Don't fear no one. God did not give you that spirit of fear. Use your voice. You staying there and being silent when you see things are not going okay because me spending drama. Hi, Abasi. Wait and see. Wait and see. If you cannot talk back against that, oh, me spending drama, and you can see wickedness. Eh? Wickedness succeeding in this life. My people, we are not going anywhere. As I said, allow me to wind up here. Thank you for watching. Let me know what your thoughts are on the comment section. A huge thank you to my incredible team, our legendary camera person and director Edwin Ochien for always filming these episodes and our amazing editor Sam for compiling this two-part series and making sure it reaches you right on time. See you guys on Tuesday. Take care and may God bless.